welcome to the hot lap. To my right, we have seven-time Supercross champion, Jeremy McGrath. Freestyle pioneer, Jeremy And to my left, we got multi-time Supercross and Motocross champion, the Zulu warrior, Grant Langston. We got Seth Enslow is our house band, everybody. Check this out. And you know it wouldn't be complete without the beautiful Monster Girls. And I'm your host Josh Hill and we're here to bring you all the news that happened in motocross this week. Yeah! Alright, and who better to bring in the Supercross highlights than the king, Jeremy McGrath. Alright you guys, here's a little clip reel of the 250 Lights East main event. Right from the middle of the pack, Martin takes the whole shot. Muskin is right behind and says, no thanks, I'm taking the lead quickly. Right here is a few laps later, he's coming inside. Looks like he gets into this corner, revs it up, forces Muskin to go high, briefly takes the lead, but Muskin being the smart rider he is, takes the inside, doubles out of the corner, triples right here, takes the lead, Looked like Martin could have come back on him, but didn't take the chance on that. Here's a little shot of Muskin again, doing a little style on the last lap, taking win number five out of seven rounds. So commanding points lead, nice little heel clicker there. Martin taking second, and Joey Savacci rounding up the podium in third, as you can see right there. Basically at this point, 20 point lead. <coughs> Marvin has to literally get hurt or have the worst day of his life not to win this title. I mean, <laughs> he needs to get five points, let's be real. So I, I think it's in the bag. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely Muskin's got this thing on lock. So those guys are uh, have a shot at the last round, but I think title title's over. I like Muskin, I think he's sweet. I'm just tired of seeing all these damn hill clickers. So I want someone else to win these days. <laughs> so what about Bogle? I don't know, Bogle's looking pretty good out there. You know, he's uh, got one win, six podiums. New pack EMH CD coming out. <laughs> Lake Snipes on point. So, I mean, I really think Bogle could put it down, you know, take this final win. What do you guys think? <laughs> Anything not to say a hill cooker. Is there anybody else out there that can even I'm going to say it. I think Savachi, you know, he's come on strong the last few weekends. I think this is the guy that's building on his confidence. He's showing more and more pace. He's gone deeper in the race, getting closer and closer to that top step of the podium, I mean, who else is there? That's it, I think he's been pretty much on point. He's like the next dude in line to get a win. Well, Martin does have one win this season already, and you know, the only problem with Martin is he's been extremely inconsistent. You know, he's got one did not qualify. Yeah. Last weekend he was the fastest guy in the race, so you know, I, I not to count him out, I, you know, I think he uh, definitely has a shot at winning this final race, but championships down to Bogle and Muskin. No. Going live to Josh Hansen. All right. Coming to us live from Corona, California, the Kawasaki Test Track, we got Josh Hansen. Josh, what's happening? Welcome to Hot Lap. What's up, boys? A lot of big treats in that studio. What's going down? All right, Josh, so you're coming off your season best finish, fourth place in San Diego. You're tied for seventh in the points. What's, uh, what's your goals for the rest of the season? Uh, I would say that my goals for the rest of the season would be to get up on the podium. That's something that I want to do, and then uh, hopefully I'd like to be a guy to win, win some races, but uh, first steps first is trying to be up on the podium, so that's the, that's the plan right now. Josh, Jeremy here. Heard you've been doing a little training during the break. Right, well, what have you been up to? Yeah, I have been. Uh, I've been training actually a lot with the uh, the Cowie guys, and uh, Millsaps has been helping out a lot and riding with him, and 
Yeah, so I've been staying on a program. I've never really done motos and stuff before, so it's been uh, just kind of changing it around for sure, on and off the bike. So Josh, how do you feel about these little kids spanking you? <laughs> They're just intense. It's, it's got boners the whole time, can go wide open. I can't. It's hard for me to get boner mold. Danny, what kind of hair products are you working with these days out there, man? Coming from a dude that has no hair, he's throwing up totally tattoos to cover his hairline. I'm running sell some blue. It's been snowing out here in California, so uh, I stick with the sell some blue. Sell some blue? You don't wash your hair, Hanny. <laughs> All right, Josh, thanks for your time. Thanks for stopping with us. Hope things go good for you in Houston. Later. Thanks for having yeah. me on Hot Lap, boys. Thanks. Squid of the week, Jordan Smith, getting a little squirrely in the heat race, you know. I was, I was under the impression he rode dirt bikes his whole life, but I could be wrong. But you know, it looks like he kind of pulled a save there, you know, I'm gonna have to give him some credit for that, you know. Still in the heat race. Looks like uh, Smith came in there a little hot, hit the back brake, took his homeboy out, Blue Buffalo. I don't know, you know, they're probably gonna have a fight in the pits, you know, maybe they'll text it out, I don't know, we'll see. Here we go into the main event. There's a right-hander, can't hit his rear brake. T-bones his teammate. Everyone goes down, next thing you know, it's, again, it's like sperm trying to find the egg, you know? And that's it, Jordan Smith, your squid of the week. What is squid? <laughs> All right. Round 13 of 17 of the Monster Energy Supercross Championship. We're about to go into the 450 highway. All right, we start at the 450 main event. As you can see, short in that flow yellow right out of the middle on that KTM. Takes the whole shot. Dungey gets him on the inside, but short comes off the bike. It looks like he hit a rut. As you can see right here, he over jumped a little, kind of flicked him sideways. Bad crash, but gets off the bike relatively easy. Dungey from there, smooth sailing. Now here's the funny thing, short skidding rear wheel is, as fans, do we know what happened to that bike? So that's a question there. Uh, right now, Weston Pike ahead of Eli Tomac. Tomac doing the triple in the middle, coming up the inside for the smooth pass. And then as you can see, Cole Seeley right there behind. Now here's another little battle, lasted for a couple laps. Anderson, Eli Tomac using that same rhythm section to get by Anderson making the pass stick for sure. But as you can see, Dungy smooth sailing out in front. Nice, easy main event it looked like for him. Rolls on to his 20th main event win. What a career that guy's having, what a year. He's got an 80 point lead. And it looks like the next three rounds, all he has to score is five points to lock this thing up. As you can tell, we saw Dungy win this race again, but it's getting a little boring at the front. He's winning all the races. What are you guys thinking about uh, the rest of the guys out there? Dungy's definitely been on fire this year. I mean, pretty much at this point, it's going to take something really dramatic to take him out of this, an injury or something, you know, of that nature. But behind that, we've seen some, you know, mixed results. Trey Kennard gets hurt, <coughs> unfortunately. Tomax had the speed, but can kind of be his own worst enemy at times. Bad starts, goes down. But how about Jason Anderson back on the podium? It's been a while. I'm a huge Jason Anderson fan. I always have been ever since he was a kid. And just his style, the way he goes about riding. and It's cool to see him get back up on the podium where he, I, I think he belongs. I think he has the speed and he has the talent to get up there and, and win one of these races before it's over. I mean, he's running out of time. I think there's four more races on the season. And, you know, I, I look to him to win or, you know, maybe even, you know, Cole Seeley. What do you guys think? Yeah, Seeley's been on it this year. Seeley, Seeley, even when he filled in for Honda a couple years back, was on it and was getting podiums. And now I think the last couple races, he's gotten a lot more comfortable. And he just looks like he's flowing one with the bike now, I think. And then Andrew Short starts this year have been amazing. I mean, he's whole shotted like almost every single race, it seems <laughs> like. In, what about his crash this weekend? Sure makes life easier starting up front. But you're right. What about that crash? I can't believe he walked away from it. Like, it was dirty. I've had some good ones, and that thing was pretty dirty, but. What do you think about that crash, Seth? <laughs> Andrew Short. Yeah. yeah I hope you're right. <laughs> Don't 
G, what up? What up? Dr. G giving you a quick race report and injury report from a couple guys out there racing. First of all, we got Will Hahn who suffered that horrific crash in practice of Anaheim 1. You know, broken back, broken arm, collapsed lung. He's not quite 100%, but he's back on a bike this week. Stoked for you, Will Hahn. He's gonna be plucking it out and be ready for the first race in Nationals, we hope. Second of all, Cooper Webb. Bad crash in San Diego, was able to come back for a huge win. Tough kid, suffered an injury to his AC joint, his shoulder. It's been great to have a couple weeks off. He's 100% both swinging for the championship in Houston. Good luck to you, Cooper. Third, last but not least, we got Kenny Roxon with the ankle injury. Suffered a ligament damage to his ankle, needed three to four weeks off. Decided to take that final week off of Easter. He's gonna be back in Houston trying to win, and that's what up. That's what's up, G. Take out of the night. All right, here, so Jeremy, take us through what's about to happen right in the 450 LCQ. All right, so it looks like we got someone getting <laughs> stuffed on the outside and a guy running up the inside, loses his front, T-bones the other guy. I think his name was Dusty Pipes. No, <laughs> Rusty Pipes. Rusty, Rusty Pipes. Got a little rusty coming in there. I think it's Dusty Pipes. <laughs> Dusty Mudflap. It didn't really work out for you. Not, not, not on that one. He pretty much cleaned himself out, and another dude just rode into him and took himself out, too. <laughs> now let's go down to the 250 FLCQ. Last lap. This is for the final transfer position. Potter just rolling in, dropping bows. <laughs> Damn. I'm going with the light, light stakeout move. The guy threw your elbow to the face. Yeah. Awesome. Taylor Potter. Got to give it to him. He just, it he was, was clean. Bumping too. His he was ludicrous in that moto, just bows out. Yeah. <laughs> a good old um, old fashioned mo uh, motocross, supercross, LCQ. Move or be moved, bitch. <laughs> so take out of the week, goes to Taylor Potter. You know, this is an appreciation for it. We figured we'll let you take out one of the monster girls. Which one of these girls is taking them out? LB? Hey, he's Australian. He's Australian. <laughs> now it's time for an arc in for our first ever show, Hot Lap. It's been a good time and uh, let's party. Woo! 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 